Hello everyone. A woman was on her deathbed with her husband at her side. As the husband was holding her cold hand and weeping quietly, the wife was trying to say something to him. The husband said, "Shh. Don't try to talk." But she insisted and said in a tired voice, I have to talk. I must confess. There is nothing to confess. It's all right," said the weeping husband. She said, "No, no. I must die in peace. I must confess that I have been unfaithful to you." The husband softly stroking her hand said, "Oh, honey, don't be concerned now. I know about it." Why else did I poison you? Friends, we really do not know who wants us dead and who wants us alive forever. Do we? Jesus says in today's gospel, you will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. We know how true Jesus words are. What is death? Death is the end of our physical life. It comes upon us any time in any place. As a matter of fact, we experience the end of many things and the loss of many people in our lifetime. When we see the first gray hair or tiny wrinkle on our face or first little lines at the corners of our eyes, we know our youth has come to an end despite our best effort to prevent it our bodies continue to age we steadily progress towards death our body reminds us that we are impermanent and perishable We experience the loss of created things and possessions both big and small. Some material things last for a few years. Some mighty strong things may last for a few thousand years, but eventually they too share the same fate. They are destroyed by floods, storms, fires or earthquakes. We are reminded that all material things can collapse at any time the destruction of houses heritage churches and properties by powerful earthquakes and and the recent super typhoon in the philippines last week is a sign of all this we also experience the loss of relationships At one moment we feel so loved and accepted by others at another moment we feel disowned and shunned by them people come and go in our lives broken social relationships remind us of the transient nature of our lives no one and nothing remains with us forever the only thing that abides in us forever is the love of God. So Jesus calls on us to embrace the permanence of God rather than our temporary life. We read in today's gospel that as Jesus is preaching in the temple, some people look up and speak in awe of the beauty of the temple. The temple is adorned with costly stones and worthy offerings to God. Of course the beauty of the temple is overwhelming it befits god for his glorious and powerful but jesus says all that you see here the days will come when there will not be left one stone upon another all will be thrown down the people are astonished at jesus words the standing of the temple is of great significance to the Jews. It means they are in a time of peace and prosperity. 
The destruction of this temple would signify a time of great hardship and persecution for the Jewish people. So they ask him when it will happen and how they will know of its coming. They assumed the destruction of Jerusalem and the end of the world would take place at the same time. But Jesus refuses to be drawn into speculation. Instead, he warns them of the impending events such as wars, insurrections, earthquakes, famines, plagues and persecutions and tells them to be prepared. He admonishes and warns them to be alert and not to be deceived by false teachers who would appear and tell them that Jesus has returned during one of these events and could be found in a certain place. He does not want them to associate any of these events he described with his second coming and the end of the world, but assures them that it will be a time of great suffering. So he instructs them that while these events will continue to take place, they must continue to preach the gospel to all people to the end of time. The prophecy of Jesus came to be fulfilled in the year 70 AD when Titus, a Roman general, seized Jerusalem and ordered the whole city and the temple to be destroyed completely. The destruction of Jerusalem is only one of the many tribulations and sufferings we have experienced since Jesus predicted it. Friends, what is the message for us? Jesus Christ, our God and Saviour, does not want us constantly to worry and be anxious about the future, the end of the world or the end of our life. Our own death or the end of the world will come when it has to come. Why should we have to worry about it? Instead of contemplating on the things yet to come, Jesus wants us to preach his gospel and to live a good and happy Christian life following his example. He tells us not to be terrified of such things, earthquakes, famines, wars, persecutions, hardships, etc. For it will not be the end. He comforts us and promises to be with us always to the very end of time. St. Paul says, Nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. Trouble or hardship or famine or nakedness or dangers or sword. Friends, instead of embracing God who can sustain us through the dangers, many of us live in a world full of sin and corruption. We seem to focus more on the pleasures and material things that surround us rather than on the spiritual things of God. Spiritual things of God are those things that stand for God and concern God. God is love and love is God. St. Paul says, Love is always patient and kind. Love is never jealous. Love is not boastful or conceited. It is never rude or never and never seeks its own advantage. He does not take offense or store up grievances. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but finds its joy in the truth. He is always ready to make allowances, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. In other words, in the midst of hardships, persecution, suffering, illnesses, wars and natural disasters, let us continue to focus on the spiritual things of God. If we are not certain when death would visit or the end of the world would come, why should we spend our time in bitterness, hatred and accumulating earthly things? Let us not pass a day or go to bed without reconciling ourselves with God and with others, for we do not know when the hour will come. Sadly, we are deceived by many people who find no fault with many of the sins and people living in sin. 
Each of us knows what our sins are and what kind of sins our parents, brothers, sisters, friends and colleagues commit every day. Many are seeking to deceive us and deprive us of our loving relationship with God. There are many who encourage us to ignore the sinfulness of the world. We need to be careful. Friends, not just little children or young people, but any of us can be deceived, including us, priests. Many people try to convince us that if we trust in ourselves, our ability and trust in others and the things we have, our life will be secure, happy and peaceful. But we know from our experience that most often we end up in disappointment. I believe if only we would trust in God first and then in ourselves and then in others and finally in the things we, ex we experience then what Jesus has promised us. Peace and everlasting life will be ours. Let us courageously and confidently follow our Lord and God Jesus Christ, the way, the truth and the life, so that we too will be saved just as Jesus has promised in today's Gospel. By your perseverance, you can save your lives. Amen. God bless you.